Hello everyone, my name is Polish Links, and unfortunately, to get a bad ending, we actually need to move even more into the previous happenings and stuff. Alright, I go right, I go left, I go right, right, left, right, left. And now, now right, and now left. Yes, all right. Now we can skip a bit, a lot, actually, and we'll see where this is going. Yes, yes, this is happening. Hello. Um, p -p 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 I went alone. Now some nude session. Yes, we've seen everything. No, mm. canteen. No, that was a bad idea. So, infirmary, that's where I went. Yes, that's where I was. No? Okay, yes, good. Now we gonna go with Slavia And after that we should be fine I think Giant strawberries Thanks to the girl's help of course And after that, oh, we have to do all the stuff. Got it. Hello, Zinia. Hello, Alisa. You prepare yourself because in the next attempt we are getting your ending. Hope you will enjoy it as we will probably. No, I think from all of them. Well, no, Miku, 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 Miku. Miku is the most interesting, but after Miku, there is Alisa. That's my opinion. And she, Nurse Viola, she's completely out of the other league. Definitely. Oh, hello. And after all that happened, we will go on to the hike. From what I remember. And yes, we do. And try to find out what are they arguing about. <sighs> Wait, I hope... I just hope... I just hope we will be able to get the ending we want. Well, I don't want it, but well, we'll get it. To be honest with you, I'm getting the bad endings just because there are achievements. That's true, sorry.
I mean, if, 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 if actually there was a chance to, the, if, if there weren't any achievements to get bad endings, I would be much, much more happy. As well. Well, it's still interesting. So we are looking for her. Good. Nothing changes, nothing changes. For some reason, nothing changes. Oh, uh, do not interfere. It's silent, whatever happens doesn't concern me. Alright, you said. I said don't interfere and well you still interfere interfered. What is going on? Don't Oh, 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 it's changing. It was close to 10 p.m. Is it changing? Well, it's probably time to get up. I gave Lena a gentle nudge on the shoulder. She opened her eyes. Good morning. Well, evening, in fact. Hi. She smiled tenderly. Time to get up, sleepyhead. Are you in a hurry? Well, no. But we're completely alone together in this camp. So what? She took a good look at me. Well, nothing. When will Olga Dimitrievna return? Is it that important to you? She got a heavy look on her face. Well, without food we are going to die here. I laughed. You're afraid to leave then? She looked away towards the wall. But how can I leave? On the bus, of course. There are no buses here. Then why do you think there is a bus for... Stop for a bus or 410 here? Frankly, I don't know. I told Dr. Dimitrievna that I had some matters to urgently resolve. Here with you and we'd come later. What? I felt like being struck by lightning. I didn't know what I should be more surprised about. The fact that there are buses passing here. Or by the fact that the camp leader agreed to leave two pioneers behind in an empty camp just like that. What I said? You mean that we can leave? Go on. No one's holding you. She sat all dead while sitting utterly still, in fact so still that her words gave me a grave cold chills. Oh, okay, I'm sorry that I reacted that way. I'm just, it's just, everything that's happened today has been a total surprise for me. You didn't look too surprised a few hours ago. I've probably said something wrong. Completely wrong. Well, don't get offended. We won't be staying here till the end of times, right? If there's a way to leave... Lena didn't say anything. I look at her back and try to understand what she's thinking. Fine! She exclaimed cheerfully, after a pause, then jumped off the bed and started to dress quickly. Come on, pack your stuff! Meet me at the square in ten minutes! Then I le leaned over and gave me a passionate kiss. Alright! I stepped out of her cabin and ran to the camp leader's cabin. Frankly speaking, I had almost nothing to pack. I tossed my winter clothing to back, showed my phone into my pocket, and headed to the square. Fifteen minutes have passed already, but Lena still wasn't here. I justified it with the fact that she has lots of stuff and to pack, and accordingly she, ne accordingly she needs much more time to get ready. However, she didn't come even in half an hour, and I started to suspect something. My legs ushered me to her cabin before I realized it. I flung the door open and saw Lena lying on the bed. What? What? Everything around her was soaked with blood. The bed sheets, the blanket, the floor was wet with blood, and I can see a huge slit on Lena's forearm. I ran to her and started shaking her by her shoulders. 
Lena, Lena, why? She was still conscious. Hi, Simon. A weak smile froze on her lips. Hang on, hey, don't you pass out. I'll think of something right now. Listen, everything is going to fine. You're not going to die. Of course, I didn't believe it myself. Lena had slid her vines from her elbow all the way down to her wrist. <gasps> it was a deep cut and given all the time I spent waiting for her the square, she bled a lot. Probably even an ambulance wouldn't do anything by now. And here in the empty camp, away from the world, Lena had zero chance of survival. How stupid can you be? I embraced and held her tightly. Tears were running down my cheeks, disappearing in her hair. I've never cried so hard in my entire life. Fool, why do you have to cut down the road? Everyone else does it across the street and you cut down the road. Sorry. It happened as it did. She muttered faintly. But why? Why? I'm tired. So tired. Lena went silent. I looked straight into her eyes. She was still conscious, but the last flicker of life was quickly dying in her. I'm so tired of it all. Wearing a mask. Suffering. I just wanted to be with you. But you left me too. I never went anywhere. Here I am. Why? What have you done? I'm sorry. I was choked with tears, unable to say anything. I'm sorry. I'll be seeing you. Later. I embraced her even tighter. Lena's breath was getting weaker and soon enough it stopped forever. Horror struck. I jumped away from the bed. My eyes went dark, my heart was beating wildly and I spotted the bloodstained knife lying on the floor. A moment later I was holding it in my hands. The blade held a hair's breath away from my wrist. But why? How would that happen? How would that help? I sat there completely freaked out and just stared at Lena. No, you aren't dead. I exploded with hysterical laughter. Come on, sleepyhead, it's time to wake up! I said softly and shook her by the shoulders. But Lena didn't wake up. What am I? I... What have I done? I jumped out of the cabin in a horror and ran like mad. I don't know how much time passed, but finally I wore myself out and collapsed on the ground. Hostile silence was all around me and only the stars looked down on me in quiet rebuke. These were the same stars that Lena admired yesterday. Yet another crank spell tore me apart. Why? Why did she do it? Because I left her? Where had I gone? I never left her and wasn't going to. Only at this moment did I realize that she was truly important to me. I realized that despite all her quirks, everything that happened today, everything that happened during the short period of our acquaintance, and she suddenly became the most precious thing in my life. And I... I instantly forgot about her about her feelings, as soon as I heard about the damn bus. Indeed, it just can't... It can't justify her act, but how could I have stopped thinking of her at all? I lay there for a long time, watching the stars. The trees were peacefully swaying in a gentle night breeze above my head. The trees didn't give a damn about what was happening to me. The landscape seemed familiar. Suppressing my tears, I headed back towards the camp. Everything here seemed to be the same as yesterday, as a few days ago. The square, Jenda's memorial, the cabins of the pioneers, Lena's cabin. I was all torn up inside. It felt like the pain would tear my body into millions of little pieces any moment now. I fell to my knees and began punching the ground until my feet were completely stained with blood. If only I'd realized just a bit earlier. Just a moment earlier, I'm not asking for more. She was so... so... Even the slightest of hints was enough for her. Only at this moment did I realize that Lena had died. And the part of me had died with her. Probably the part of me that I would call the best. I came to my senses after a while, standing in her cabin. The blood had dried up already, the moonlight was no longer reflected in it. God damn it. That's a terrible ending. <sighs> I went to her bed and sat down next to Lena's body. I was terribly afraid to be here, but I felt that I had to tell her something. I'm sorry. I started. It's far too late, of course, but if you can hear me out of there somewhere, just remember, please. 
I will love you forever, for the rest of my life. And that was the plain truth. I'm sorry that I ignored your feelings. I'm sorry that I always thought only about myself. I'm sorry for everything. It was me who should have died, not you. I covered her blood, body with a blanket and slowly left the cabin. I regained consciousness at the bus stop. So running away, scam back. I muttered darkly to myself. I couldn't stand to stay a single minute longer in this camp. Then I will never come back. I can't just justify what I have done. I'll just wait for the bus that will take me away from here. I didn't give the slightest name about what's going to happen to me tomorrow or in an hour. I don't care about answers. I don't care about how I got here. Soon enough I saw a glimmer of dim light in the distance. Somehow I wasn't surprised at all. In a minute I was sitting in an empty number 410 bus and was looking into the dark of the night through the weather beaten window. My mind was blank. Everything that makes us human, feelings, emotions, aspirations, suffering, I left it all back there in that pioneer camp. Now all I have is the this night and the empty bus. There is no more future, no more present. If I died tomorrow, that would only mean that yet another human body had keys to exit. The real me died there a few hours ago. I don't know how much time passed, but the fatigue overtook me. I wasn't going to fight it as it made absolutely no difference whether I'm sleeping or awake. I could barely hold my eyes open and soon enough I passed out. Alright, let's end it here and we'll see if he came back to his times or what will happen to here and that will be all in the next episode. See you then, bye.